Hello everybody, it's PZZSE in here. Today I'm going to be doing another What's On My iPod video. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so I'm going to do one again. I've got the new iPod Touch 4th generation, and in syncing it, I had a few problems with getting my app, with getting all my apps to sync. So I had to manually put some in, and they're not all the same ones that I had on my other one. So, it's going to be a little bit different, but let's go ahead and get into it. <clears throat> I've got my logo as my background right there. But when we go in, I've got the OS... 10 background, the snow leopard and the leopard. The home screen here is the same as ever. It will always be this way, alright? Just just gonna let you guys know that. In fact, while I'm over here, I'm gonna turn airplane mode on. Just to keep things from popping up. So, yeah, this is gonna be the way the home screen always looks. Let's go ahead and take a look at my, docking st my dock system real quick. I've got the camera right there for easy access no matter what screen I'm on. And I've got in this iPod folder here, just a bunch of Apple apps, um, so, like the native ones, if you know what I mean. Just a few native ones. Um, I've got music, video, photos, iTunes, Nike plus iPod is in there, uh, FaceTime is in there, and Game Center is in there. So that's that. And then next to that, I have Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter, that is twitter.com slash pzzsen, if you are interested. The layout here has been the same ever since day one of me owning an iPod Touch. And we're going to go ahead and get away from that and take a look at screen two. Now, I am a heavy use of folders. I am a heavy folder user, so this will be interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at some games I've got. I have three games folders. I have that many games. Open up the first one. Let's take a look what we've got. I've got in here... 10 Pen Light. This is actually a really fun game, guys. I mean, I can't stress it enough. It is a light version, yes, but it's still very fun. Really, it's really, really fun. I'm not going to open all of these, but I am going to open this one so I can show you guys what it's like. So let's go ahead and hit play 10 Pen Poker. I'll just do a one player here. And yes, look at those physics. Let's put the volume down a little bit. Yes, guys, this is a great game. Um, just like Dr. Ashen said in his I in his iPad video, I mean, this is an excellent game. I mean, really, it is. I would love to try this out, though, on the iPad. That would be really fun. But even on the iPod Touch, it is still a great game. So, 10-pin light, it is the light version, so it's free. Well, yeah, even though it's called the light version, it doesn't always make it free, but in this case, it is free. <clears throat> we have here a Christmas Santa. Now, as I said my last time I did this, even though it's not Christmas time, it's still a good game. Christmas time is star sort of approaching, and it's still a fun game. I actually haven't played it since I bought this iPod. I haven't played it as often, but I'm sure it's just as fun as it was then. Um, just haven't really gotten around to playing with it yet. Fast Lane Light. You know that la that racing game? Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Real Racing GTI, that's another good game. Uh, Enigma, Enigma 2, Flood It 2, Germs, Goal, Goal, yes. Labyrinth 3D, I actually forgot I had this on here. Um, Line Rider, I actually have not played that either on this thing yet, I've been meaning to though. Shift, um, now what is Shift? Um, it's, uh, based on a Flash game. Look it up on Google if you want to see what it is. I'm not going to explain it to you because I don't know how to, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. Tower Defense Madness. Alright, we're in the second folder, obviously. Tower Defense Madness. Um, Paper Toss. Okay, real quickly about Paper Toss. I don't know what it is about Paper Toss, but everybody loves it. I'm not too crazy about it, to tell the honest truth. And every time I delete it, it's this is weird. Every time I delete the app from my iPod, and whenever I let someone play a game on my iPod, the first thing I like is, do you have Paper Toss? And I'm like, well, no, I don't have it because I don't play it that much. Then when I put Paper Toss on it, nobody seems to care about it. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of weird. The brightness just kicked on, so it's probably going to look a little bit washed out here. I do apologize for that. In fact, let me go ahead and turn auto brightness off real quick. That ought to do it. Let's go back in and take a look at the next game. Finger Physics, that is another game. Pocket Tanks, this is actually pretty fun. I played it um, recently on the way back from a trip, uh, on the way on a trip, pretty much. It is actually a really good game. Um, it is a bit frustrating, though. I do, one hit I will give it, when you are trying to, or you know, set up your shot, I do wish you'd give you a little, you know, just a little visual rep 
like angle or something to show you where it's going to hit. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. That's the only my only hit on it, but I guess it does add to the challenge, I suppose. Rat on the Run. This game is very interesting. If you haven't tried it, check it out. It's free on the App Store. Um, Snake Galaxy. I have to open this. This game has been was my favorite game last year. Um, kind of quit playing it, but I got back into playing it, and it's still a great game. I don't play it as often as I did back then, but let me just show you guys a bit of gameplay on this. Basically, it's um, sort of a 3D version of Snake. Go around, picking up little bits of food. They're not bugs, they're like gems or something. The music's actually pretty good. Some people, I find it to be pretty good. Some people might find it annoying. So you might want to be aware of that when playing it without headphones. So basically what you do, you move your finger around and the snake will follow your finger. So that's how you control it. Good game. It costs $2.99 in the, or I think actually it only costs $1.99 in the App Store. I will have the proper price somewhere. I'll probably have a correction annotation pop up on the screen if you're interested. This game is really fun. Yes, it is a great game. I mean, it, it looks pretty realistic, too. I mean, even though it's not very realistic in terms of how you play it, it still is a real... It, it does have really good graphics. Yeah, I think I'm going to kill myself because I need to get on with this video or otherwise it's going to be too long. Yeah, come on! Fight my tail! Where's my tail? There's my tail. Yep, if you bump into your tail like that, it's game over. Just like on the old game. Oh, ah! High score. Oh, look. I can actually still input it. Hold on. Let me um, bring this up frame right quickly. So that is Snake Galaxy. Now, next to that, we have Snake Paris. So if you are interested in this game, Snake Paris is actually free. And I'm going to give you guys a bit of gameplay on it, too, but hopefully not as much. But this is the bonus level in Snake Galaxy. Uh, this has good music, actually. I, I kind of like this music. Cut it down a little bit, though. Nonetheless. Ah, I can't see. Oh, there we go. Yep, it's exactly the same, but it takes place in Paris. Now, why do I have both the full version and the free version on this? Well, for some reason, I find the uh, that this level on the full version is a little bit buggy, actually. Um, I don't know why, but on the free version, it works flawlessly, so I just kind of keep them both on here. You know. Yeah, that's enough of that. So that's Snake Paris. So for some reason the Paris level on this, on Snake Galaxy, seems just a little bit buggy to me. But on the actual Snake Paris version, it's no problem at all to play it, so yeah. Next up we have Rocket Golf Lite. This is a sort of a game about golf, sort of, kind of. I believe, yeah, that is a light version, so it's free, so check it out. Sneezy's Light, a game. It's like a, um, a chain reaction game, you know, chain reaction games, but, um... You know, people sneeze. Tetris. I got that when it was on sale. I'm sure you know what Tetris is. If not, you really, really need to look it up and try it out. <laughs> You're missing out on a lot if you don't know what Tetris is. Um, Sunday Lawn. That's another game from uh, uh, Donut Games, which made Rat on the Run. Uh, actually, is it? I can't remember. I do know that this game is a little bit fiddly in terms of controls. It's it's fun, but... Oh. Oh, I just opened it. Okay. Yep, it is Donut Games, because uh, the Donut Games thing just played. So, yeah, this is the title screen of Sunday Lawn. Basically, what you do, you mow your, mow your lawn, but if you touch a mole, oh, you die, pretty much. Um, yeah, but as I was saying before I knocked the camera over, or the camera just spontaneously fell over, I'm not sure which, I think I knocked it over. Um, the controls on it are a little bit iffy. I'm not too big a fan of the controls, to be perfectly honest with you, so... Yeah, but still, it's worth the check. It's worth checking out if you're interested. But I do wish they would change the controls a bit. I haven't played it enough to really say what I didn't like about it. But you know what I mean. And Star Do Star Shower. I'll play this one a little bit because you will recognize it. Now, if you own a Nintendo DS and 
you have Super Mario 64 or um, Super Mario 64 DS or New Super Mario Brothers. I think it's on New Super Mario Brothers. You, this is actually a clone, pretty much, of one of the mini games. The mini games. Uh, basically, you're trying to protect these little. I don't know what those are actually down there. And um, if you, you're trying to protect, keep stars from hit, from hitting them. And as you, as you'll probably see, I think I might have been out of frame for a second there. Sometimes this, a, a cloud will pop up. Let's see, if I get, let's see if it'll come up again. There it is. If you hit the cloud, if I can hit it, all of them go away. So it's exactly like that mini game on Super Mario Brothers 60 on Super Super Mario 64 DS, um, if you know what that is. On Q Folder 3, I've got fewer games in here. S Zlider, this yeah, Zlider. It's a little hard to say. Um, Wild West Pinball. I've actually done a review on that. Trace. That's a Flash game too, I think. If you want to check that out. Unblock Me Free. That game. Stardunk. That's a pretty interesting game. Recently got an update to it, and I've been meaning to try it out, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Gun Brothers. I don't like that game very much. I just don't don't like the controlling in it or some. I, I can't remember what it is, but. It was free, or I think it was temporarily free, but I got it now. Um, what is that called? It's SMR, Super Marble Roll. It's basically a lot like, it actually, yeah, it's a lot like Super Monkey Ball on the iPhone and iPod Touch, but it is not quite as much fun, mainly because you have sort of an isometric view of the level rather than a, you know, perspective or first-person view of the level, um, here. So, I, uh, sorry about that, guys, I'm trying to adjust the tripod here a little bit. Um, I think that ought to be the best bet right there. Yes. Um, so, that's, I, I mean, as I'm saying, it, it's not quite as much fun as Super Mario Monkey Ball. Angry Birds Light. I haven't opened this yet, but I hear Angry Birds is an excellent game, so I had to get it. <clears throat> On to Utilities. I have this is called Utilities 1, but I only have one Utilities folder at the moment. Cube Timer. Unfortunately, this is taken down from the App Store, so if you if you actually downloaded it, you might want to put it back on there just because it is a it's very useful for timing yourself on the Rubik's Cube. Acura Free. It's a battery charge status indicator. Ooh, turn that down a little bit. Yeah, it's apparently a very accurate way of knowing what your battery life is. Close. Thank you. Um, genius scan. This is a this is a cool idea. In fact, let me see if my internet will cooperate here, so I can do a demonstration of this. All right. What you do? You take a book. We'll use this book because it's handy. This is iTrix. It's a game with those um, stereographs in them, and you look. At and you get a weird um, 3D effect. I'm going to hit this button. Oh, my Wi-Fi went away. We'll try this. Let me, hold on. Real quickly. Hold on. Okay, let's see. Um, so what you do, this is useful if you have an iPhone and you're shopping and you see a book or something that you want. Oh, you know what this is? This is actually, okay. This is actually a scanner. I'm thinking of something completely different. We'll look into this a little bit later. But still, I suppose this will work. What you do is you um, take a picture of something you want to scan, like this. I'll just take a picture of the book. Oh, that'll work. And uh, hit use. And then what you do, you um, adjust these little things here. Crop it out. Just get it as good as possible. That's going to be as good as I'm going to get it for now. You match it up like that, and then you um, do it. And then it basically uh, looks like it's been scanned off of a computer. Now, if you have the time and patience, you can get it to look a little better than this. But still, that is what it does. So this would be very useful during school or something to um, sort of scan the, ch the uh, whiteboard or chalkboard to get notes. You know what I mean? Um, speed test. It's a speed tester. Um... Paper links. This is a QR code reader, which works very well. Flashlight. It's a flashlight. Now do this. It's a checklist. 
Dragon Dictation is good um, if it it would be a good app if you did not need to be connected to the internet to do it. And another speed test um, that I just checking out. Oh, um, this is Dig Dug. Yes, I just. Oh, it crashed. Huh. All right, the next step is not in a folder. It's Dig Dug Remix. I don't have it in a folder for some reason. I just don't. But yeah, that's that. Um, let me real quickly show you guys Snaptel before the internet cuts out on us. Uh, this is what I was talking about before. What you can do is you take a photo of a book, and so let me do that real quick. Uh, yes. I like that, hit use, and what it'll do, it'll search for that book. Let's see if it'll work. Come on, please work. Don't let me down here. I might need to do a cut here. Come on, come on. Oh, you know what? It let me down. You know why? Because the Wi-Fi cut off. Ugh. But what it does is it goes through and it looks for that book based on the book's cover. Is that not cool or what? I know. It's, it's a pretty neat app idea. It also has a barcode reader built in. Oh. Uh, let's see if I can stop that. Ugh, I can't do anything because it's not working. Ah, come on. <sighs> okay. Let's reset that, and I want to show you guys this. Um, I wish I could have shown you that function there, but yeah, you see it didn't work, so let's actually delete that. But it also have, comes with a built-in uh, barcode reader for scanning barcodes. Let's see if I can get it while in frame. Oh, apparently I can't, but yeah, you can sort of see how that works. Um, here, does it go landscape? I don't know, but it basically you can use it to scan the barcode of an item, so that way it'll work like that if it does not, if it's not a book. Oh, I should also mention it works with books and video games and something else, but I can't remember what else it works with, but that's what it works with. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at reference. What kind of reference thingamajigs do I have on here? Driver's Ed, that is a Driver's Ed app. Wikipedia. Um, uh, this is a good application right here. Oh my goodness, guys. I mean, if you like, f if you like weird facts, you will love this app. It's free. Totally awesome facts, it's called. What you do is you just search. You search a keyword. Let's look up a banana. Let's just look up banana. Oops. Banana. And search. See if anything comes up. Yep. A site tree on 2CV with an oil leak once traveled 500 miles through Italy after its gearbox was filled with bananas. Yes, and if you don't put anything in the search box, it will load all of the facts. And look at how many facts you get. You see that? It's scrolling very fast, but look at that little scroll bar. It's just taking its time. Look at how many facts you get on here. This is insane, isn't it, guys? And we hit the end. That is... So if you like facts, you would you need to check this app out. It is called Totally Awesome Facts. Look it up right now. It's pretty cool. Dictionary is um, dictionary.com, but you don't need internet to use this app, which is really, really cool. You can, it's, it's a dictionary, pretty much. Um, it is a light version, though. Stumble Upon. If you like Stumble Upon, get this app. Uh, user Guide. This is actually a web... A, uh, what do they call them? Um, it's a bookmark, but it's on my home screen. It's like web clip. It's actually a web clip of the iPhone and I, or the iPod Touch User Guide. And poker hands if you're interested in poker at all, but you're still sort of a novice. You can use this to look up some uh, poker hand in their ranks. Pretty easy, basic, useful app if you're that kind of person. Next, photography. Photoshop. Why did I open that? I don't know. Oh yeah, Photoshop lets you make some interesting... Uh, it's like you can cut something out of a photo and put it into another photo, pretty much. Uh... Mill color for um, altering the uh, color co properties of your photo. Pixel Perfect is another one, but you only get so many effects with it. So let me show you it. 
Uh, let's use one of my home screen uh, backgrounds. Let's, um, let's not use that one. Let's actually use this one. This is a photo I took with the camera. Effects, and these are all you get. You get black and white, sepia, brightness. Oops, come on. Oh, you can't adjust it, I suppose. No, we don't want that. Uh, saturation, come on. Uh, hue. Ah, what is it doing? Stop! Okay. Come on. Um, uh-oh. I think it froze. Let's try that again. Do, 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 do. Ah, go away. I don't want that one. I want this one. Oh, dearie me, guys. Uh, hue. And you can invert the colors. So, yes. That's that. Photoshop Express. This is Photoshop Mobile. Um, it's not really a full-fledged Photoshop. I mean, that would be ridiculous, guys. That would be insane. Um, but it is, uh, you can just do a few quick fixes to your photos, so, yeah. It's helpful if you're taking a snapshot in landscape mode, and you actually want it to be a landscape photo, because if you take a snapshot like this in landscape mode, your, the, uh, uh, Apple, the, the iOS doesn't automatically make it landscape for you. So you'll need to open up this app to actually flip it into f landscape. I believe it's free. I'm not sure if it still is or not, though, but I got it when it was free, nonetheless. Crop. This is a photo cropping app. Um, Sketchbook X. This is really cool. This is actually from Autodesk. So um, this is a light version, but you get quite a few little brushes and stuff in here. It's actually, you might, it's worth giving it a, a look at. Just see what you think about it. Um... What is, I steady. This is oh yeah, this is cool. It's a steady cam actually. So you just hold it as steady as you can. Oh, it doesn't. You have to ask it to take a picture. So here I'm shaking it. You see how I'm shaking it? It's not going to take a photo, even though I told it to. I have to hold it as steady as I can. So this isn't working very well. There you go. And it takes a well steady photo. Um, so that is steady cam. And uh, we have Pro Camera Light here. And it's got similar features. It can do the same thing. Yep, um, if you're, there's quite a bit of features in here, even though it is a live version. I don't really feel like going through it, though. Um, mental note. This is a, uh, sort of a extended note, uh, extended version of the note app. Guys, how long is this video? We're still on the second page. We gotta hurry through this. Toys! Oh, dear. Look at all these toys. Alright, I'm gonna start just reading off some of these, and if I find one that's interesting enough, I will open it. Mini piano. It's a miniature piano. Zippo lighter. Uh, Motion X dice. Okay, let's open this. I think this is a cool app. You probably you've probably seen this on the iPod Touch Sega Generation commercials. It's a dice app. You shake it up, and it just rolls like that. And you can hold them. So you could probably use this to play Yahtzee. You know what I mean? So, if you don't know where your dice are, you can probably pull this app out and use it for Yahtzee. Lego Photo, it takes Lego, it takes a photo and makes it look like it was made out of Legos. Oh, this is cool. I have to, I have to show you this. I have to. It would be a sin. No, it wouldn't be a sin. It would just be very bad if I didn't show you this. This is a very cool app. Everybody I've shown this to has been super impressed by this. Let's just do the top one here. I'm actually going to have to pick you guys up. <clears throat> I apologize. Alright, so it's loading right now. Ugh. It says, keep the device straight. There we go. Now watch this. Ready? Yes. You can pan around in real time. Do you guys see that? That is awesome, isn't it? So you can actually literally turn your body and it will turn with it. You do get an iAd down here because it is a free version, but I mean, it's still a really, really cool app. Everybody I've shown this to has been like, dude, that is so awesome. How did it do that? That was asking me, where, how much did that cost? And I will say uh, that it was free, but you do need the new iPod Touch or iPhone to do it because it uses the gyroscope. So that is a beautiful um, way to uh, demonstrate the capabilities gyroscope. Alright, if I can get my tripod back, let's go ahead and close this. 
take a look at what other toys I have. So yeah, guys, if you have the new iPod Touch or iPhone, check that one out. It is a really cool app. It will impress so many people. Just say, here, take, like if they're looking at your iPod, say, here, take a look at this. And then they'll look at it. it they will be blown away, honestly. Um, shake and share. Well, you can indeed shake it, but you can't really share it. It is a Tic Tac app, because there's an app for everything. I've tried so hard to share this with my old iPod, but I can't get it to work. I don't know why. It's really annoying, but yeah, you can apparently open this up, and then you can pour it into someone else's. I can't figure out how to do that, though. I'm just, I just can't. Voice changer, voice plus. I actually have not tried this yet, so this is going to be a first. This allows you to change your voice to stuff. So let me actually go ahead and hit record. Actually, I'm not going to hit record because I need something to say. Um, actually, uh... I suppose. Okay, um, what shall I say? Hello everybody, this is P-A-Z-Z-S-E-N here. It's preparing it. Hello everybody, this is P-A-Z-Z-S-E-N here. Cut that up a little bit. And you can do this. Change voice. Hello everybody, it's P-A-Z-Z-S-E-N here. Or you can do... Let's go through some of these effects. You can reverse it. Haunting. Change voice. That is indeed very haunting. Robots! Let's do robots. That sounds really cool. Wow, that is awesome. Yep, I better get out of that before I play with it too much. Um, Cube Cheater. It lets you cheat on your Rubik's Cube. It's actually a really cool app. I would demonstrate it, but I really, this video is getting long. Um, pretty Particles. Ugh, and yet I opened this up. It's one of those particle things where, you know, you make particles appear and you can do interesting stuff. So, yeah. Um, it's pretty okay. ARP Photolight. This is actually another gyroscope app. So, I'll pick you guys up again. But this one lets you use your own photo. So, I'll just take a quick photo of my television. Or, actually, let's not. Let's just use a photo I already have. Let's use the gumballs again. Ah. Mm. I'm not too big a fan of this one, but it kind of lets you look around again. I mean, it doesn't really work very well. I f If you turn off the rotation, it works a little better, but honestly, I'm, I'm just not too impressed by this. I don't really... I mean, it just... Ah, I don't like this one very much. It kind of works, I suppose. But that's that. Okay. That is that. Um, printer Whisperer. Uh, that is apparently can display an interesting message on a printer. Oh! Bad. Bad, bad. Uh, hold on. So that lets you put interesting messages on a printer's display to, uh, I don't know. And binary clock. Yes. Every geek needs a binary clock of sorts. I want an official binary watch, like a real binary watch that you wear on your wrist, but this will do for now. It's a binary clock. I uh, am not good. I know how to read binary, like in numbers, but I'm not sure how to read a binary clock as yet. But based on what I can tell, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is something 17. And... Yep, got it right. Pretty sweet, isn't it? Indeed, it is. So, yep, let me actually refocus here. Toys 2, let's go in. Tesla toy, this is cool, I like this one. I was playing with this during lunch today, actually. Basically, it's a particle toy thing. This one works a lot better, though, than that other one. I mean, you can... Yeah, this is pretty fun. You're sort of a vortex. Sweet. This is free, I think, so you can check it out if you want to. It is definitely fun, though, if you're into that kind of stuff. This is Pixel. I don't like Pixel because it doesn't update fast enough. Blah. 
I would like it if it updated uh, accurately, because then I could draw interesting 8-bit characters, but I can't because it doesn't update fast enough. If I go slowly, oh, even if I go slowly, it doesn't update fast enough. So it's just a piece of crap. I don't know why I have it on here anyway. I juggle. This is just... Make somebody juggle. If you want to check it out, check it out yourself. I think it's free. I'm not going to do a demo on that. It'll take too long. Drawing. Oh, dear. We've got a lot of these. Um, <clears throat> My paint free. Scribble light. Simple draw. Simple draw. Sorry. Spin art. Symmetric something. It's tripping. Okay, I gotta show you Tripping Fest. For some reason, on the older iPod Touches, this works really good. In fact, hold on real quick. Here I have uh, my old iPod Touch here. As you can see, I've got the same app open on both of them. It works flawlessly on here. I mean, it updates beautifully. Everything works really good on it. And all that stuff. But on the newer ones, and people have been complaining about this on the iPhone 4 and the iPod Touch 4th generation, for some reason, it does not update very fast at all. You see that? Very slow. And the developers haven't really done anything about it yet, but in, if they ever do, you should definitely check it out. It is definitely good. It, they have a free version and a light version, I, or a full version and a free version. I got the full version when it was the only version and it was free, but yeah, I need to clear this out. It's starting to get a little laggy. Look at all those apps I've got open. Ah, whoa, good grief. That's the most apps I've ever had open on this thing ever. Oh well. Um, next. Hold on. Let me actually bring you guys back out here. Sketchy. It's a drawing thing. Oh. Yeah, this is actually very glitchy, but I have it on here because apparently they're working on fixing the glitches in it, but it's another drawing app. Um, and this is new dot notes. Uh, this is a vector drawing app. You use it for notes, and you can actually apparently export it and edit it in Adobe Illustrator if you have that program. But, I'm not a big fan of this UI at all. I mean, if you ask me, what this reminds me of is one of those little, is one of those little drawing apps for little kids, you know what I mean? It's, it, it just feels so, uh, I mean, look at this plus button right here. Do you see that? I just don't like that at all. And here's the edit button. You hit it, and it lets you... Ugh, I, I, I can't stand this UI. But it is an interesting thing, nonetheless. People have given it some good praise. Let's actually get out of that. Plus. Um, it lets you draw in vector. And as you can see, actually it works very well. But, um, like I say, the UI is where I give it the most hits. Because, to be perfectly honest with you, look at that. That does. That's, I just can't stand that UI at all. It just feels like some sort of cheap kid drawing thing on a computer. Uh, I don't like that at all. All right, here is New Super Mario Brothers guide. That's a, a guide for New Super Mario Brothers. Um, I've already showed you Snaptail, and here is animation. These are some light animators. They both do essentially the same thing. They're flipbook animators. Uh, we got Flip It and Flipbook Light. They're very restricted. I wish they make some free, fully fledged free animators on the iPhone and iPod Touch. Finally, the next page, and there's not as many folders, so hooray, we'll get through this quickly. Um, also, oh, Pandora Box. This is actually an app store type thing. It basically, ugh, I'm sorry guys, I need a new tripod. It tells you basically when, it basically alerts you when an app that you're watching becomes free, and it makes for a great app store client. So, that's very nice indeed. Um, social networks. It doesn't fit on the icon, but when you open it, it's social networks. Photo bucket and photo scatter. I just got those up there because they are kind of photo social network related. Um, pizza Hut. Uh, if we ever need to order pizza, I have this on here, and we can you can actually build a pizza in here, and uh, then you can order it actually straight from this app. I haven't tr used it really yet, but I have tried building my own pizza before with it before, and it was pretty fun, actually. File sharing. This is for sharing photos via Bluetooth. I've got share it and photo share. That's nice. I do wish Apple would have a, um, what is it, what is the word I'm looking for? An inbuilt Bluetooth sharing, um, utility on here. That would just make sense. I mean, you know what I mean? Um... 
Simple Mind X. This is, um... It lets you make spider maps. That's what it lets you do. It makes you make spider maps. Let you make spider maps. So sometimes I just open it and play around with it just because I like how professional looking the application is. Here, I'll show you what it is. Yeah, I, I actually do like this UI a lot. I really do. I don't know what it is. I just like the UI. Um, so that's that. But you can make spider maps with it. Typing. These are like those typing things that you used in elementary school but for your iPhone or iPod Touch. Let me show you speed type here. Touch start to begin. And here what you do, you type in what it says. And I'm not going to do that, but you, uh, can you go in landscape? Nope, you can't go in landscape. If that annoys you, then try out type fast. And this is a definitely a far superior app over that. Not, I mean, I don't, does this, the you, this part here doesn't go in landscape. But look at this, this is chapter one of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. And this is the entire chapter of that book. The entire chapter one. And this is one of the exercises. And not only that, you can actually create your own exercise right there. Let's do this one, right? Let's find one to do real quickly, um, just so I can show you how it works. Uh, there's what I was doing. Oh, the last... The last letters you have trouble with, randomly arranged. Okay. For some reason, all of those are X's. I don't know why, but okay. No exercise. Now I could go landscape, and here we go. X, 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 space, X, space. I don't know. Uh, return. Ah, okay. Uh, well, apparently my words per minute is 10. Okay, so that's that. So it's like those little um, typing helper thingies that you used in elementary school. Swatch. This allows you to uh, make colors. It's pretty fun just to play around with it sometimes. Make your own little colors. Yay! Let's make a green color. Or, uh, yeah, there we go. Slide. Okay, a blue color. Why not? Ugh, sorry, guys, I just yawned there. Text art. Why do I keep. Okay, for some reason I keep automatically opening them, but this is one I will show you guys. Uh, I'm going to take a photo here of my lap. Click. There we go. Now, okay, use that. Watch this. What it does is it takes and it turns your image into text. <laughs> Isn't that so cool, guys? And uh, this is text. You can select it. Come on, select. What would it select? There we go. I selected it. And it is working its way down. It's a very laggy thing, but, you know. Yeah, there it goes. You can see it following behind. Here, you can go in here and you can view it in black and white, but you can zoom in on each of the characters to see what they all were. So, that is pretty cool. Yep. And that is all for text art. I've got to stop opening these apps. Turbo Charger. It's a battery maintenance app. Skype. You all know what Skype is. Converters. Um, I am pretty interested in, uh, you know, numbering, no, different number systems, so I do have a number converter and a uh, one converter. In fact, a one converter is a very simple app. Okay. Look, those are the only two buttons, zero and one. So, type in a binary number incredibly well, and, um, how do I actually convert it? I forgot. Zero zero oh one one zero zero one one zero one one uh, bleh, okay. Convert. Apparently that is three zero nine seven. This one here though is really cool because it lets you actually this is insane. Alright, I am going to go all the way down to the bottom because you have base sixty two. Let's find out what the number P I Z Z S E N is, why not? In standard decimal. As you can see, we've got a lot of interesting sort of codes. Those are different numbering systems. Also, as we go up, you'll notice they get longer and more complex. Yes. And decimal, that is, well, I don't really know. Where is it at? Right there. That's it in decimal. I don't know how to read a number that big, so, oh well. And convert bot. Ugh. Stop yawning. Convert bot. This is no longer free, unfortunately, but know what it looks like. It lets you convert stuff. Very cool user interface. 
could do a bunch of conversions. You probably, there's, can't talk anymore. Plenty of reviews on there. This one is called Apple, and it's got a bunch of Apple apps in it. The Apple Store and Remote are in there at the moment. Those are not stock apps. Those are apps I downloaded, so that's why they're in there. Next page, and thankfully the last page. <laughs> yeah. Um, VLC Remote Free. Under Google, I've got the Google app and the Google Earth app. Here is Ustream. Oh, Ustream was updated today. It now is supported with the new iPod Touch. Yes! Thank you, Ustream. That was really annoying when I, it didn't work before. Uh, books. And here I have Bible Reader and iBooks. Now, iBooks isn't in the Apple folder, mainly because I do kind of want to... Ugh, sorry, guys. Mainly because I want to have a separate folder for books for some reason. Uh, news. We have here Engadget and PopSci. Popular Science. If you've never heard of that website, check it out, actually. PopSci.com, I believe it is. <clears throat> Got some interesting news articles on there. HTML email. Good for uh, experimenting around with HTML and WordPress. That is what's on my iPod in grand and glorious detail. When will I get this up on YouTube? I don't know. But it'll be one part. Because I'm a partner. Hey, hey. Thanks for watching.